for liberty. I always like to tell the story that um, back in the 90s and maybe up until the 2000s, uh, you have you know the internet economy that has given rise to a global network of firms that firms used to innovate to develop their online presence. And remember, in the 2000s, we saw the rise of the of the data economy, where firms started to increasingly use data to drive improvements in products and services. So, for instance, using the very first data-driven intelligence and big data services. Um, so, but since then. What you can see is how we've been moving to what we could call not just the data economy or the internet economy, but the algorithmic economy, meaning many organizations' success is set to directly correlate with their ability to automate processes and, and you know, using AI and data, data-driven systems to boost productivity, to innovate, to personalize products. Now, AI and algorithms are not new, but now the true value of AI and data has really been un unveiled. There's uh, uh, a lot of talks about the value of data and how, how much GDP that could drive when you harness data. So it's no longer just having the data, by the way, it's also what you can do with it as a business or as a country. So data is even more relevant in today's economy, but it will really be critical in, in what you could call tomorrow's algorithmic economy. And digitalization has uh, progressively increased the scope and frequency of data that's generated. Technological improvements have allowed firms to store, process, analyze, transfer data much more easily. Uh, with more computing power, we have more storage, we have cheaper technologies available. So that explains the acceleration of data-driven innovation. And it's really a key enabler of economic growth, competitiveness, but also societal prosperity. Uh, so beyond commercial use, you know, you can use those technologies for targeted healthcare, uh, for more tailor-made treatments. Uh, and you can see how during COVID, for instance, collecting and sharing data across the EU with uh, researchers, healthcare providers and, and companies, that could help deliver um, uh, AI solutions to address the crisis. That free flow of data between EU and, and, and foreign countries and other countries has been thrown into question recently, which could potentially hinder Europeans access to everyday services like online shopping, video conferencing and social media. Um, that there are a few cases to mention. I don't want to go into too much jargon, but you see how your Google News, your you know, your apps, maps, news, etc. are bundled. That means you know you get to benefit from uh, when you search for things, the, the application knows automatically um, uh, you know, who you are, what you might type. I mean, it's very convenient for us to use. This is also why we use those services, right? And that benefits consumers and that's, of course, uh, very lucrative. But the Commission is going to try to, in some ways, potentially dismantle those services of big platforms. And that wouldn't necessarily be good news because that would turn back the clock 15 years um, if you look at what we can benefit uh, having vertically integrated services. Back in 2018, there was like a third of the largest US news websites that had to block access to the EU because they, they didn't manage to comply on time. Um, and I think thousands of US news websites still remain blocked to date. Um, there's a, somewhere a database that keeps track of all those. And I think until recently, the Chicago Tribune was not accessible and it's a Pulitzer Prize winning publication. So um, I would also add that some um, platforms or some companies had to interrupt some of their online services in the EU because of the concerns they had to be able to comply or not with the GDPR. You might remember the um, Czech platform Seznam. They had to shut down their student social network and the online company, uh, online gaming company Gravity Interactive uh, had to block uh, European users from accessing its games and services, at least at the time. So yeah, I think these are just a few more examples of how 
you can respond to the criticisms of GDPR gating the free flow of information. Yeah, it, it, there have been hiccups uh, and there are still difficulties for companies to provide their services to us because of the GDPR. Sure.